Now, a report commissioned by the Independent Electoral Commission of South Africa has found that the country's local government elections will not be free and fair if they are held in October of this year. But what will happen to South African municipalities as they grapple with their financial challenges, including downgrades as revenue collection also continues to decline? On Monday, international ratings agency Moody's downgraded the city of Cape Town, the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan Municipality, the city of Johannesburg, the city of Ekuruleni, as well as the city of Tlatuze. For more on this, I'm joined by Mr. Sitole Mbanga, who is the CEO of South African Cities Network. A very good afternoon to you, Mr. Mbanga. Thank you for your time today. Perhaps let's start with the downgrading of the five municipalities. What were the reasons given by Moody's for this act? Good afternoon, Tammy. Um, the ratings agency have um, provided reasons that um, predate, in fact, prior the current crisis that we are in. And I think, um, on the whole, um, there's a reflection of what's happening uh, to the sovereign uh, credit rating. There is a domino effect that takes place um, whenever uh, the sovereign, in other words, the national um, credit rating goes down. It tends to have an impact on um, virtually all institutions of state, particularly those that are involved in trading, such as municipalities that sometimes um, can go to the market and conduct borrowings. And that is the one uh, particular issue. The second uh, reason, um, and I suspect is, is, is possibly the major reason, there is a sense on the part of the credit rating institutions that most South African municipalities are unlikely to collect revenue at the rate at which it was um, predicted and planned for at the beginning of the year. And that is, uh, I think, as we all know, as a consequence of the fact that um, the impact of COVID on both business uh, citizens as well as households has been such that there's been no new income that has been generated by both those sources of revenue, um, uh, as well as, as other factors. I mean, in part, our inability uh, to be uh, consistent in terms of energy generation and other challenges that are there. Um, I guess what has now recently happened in the last uh, two weeks, the instability that we've seen, particularly in the two pockets um, in, in KwaZulu-Natal and in Gauteng, will also have an, an, an onward uh, contrib contributor factor into the next quarter. And why these five specifically, do you think? I, well, I suspect that they were just reporting on those files, but I think we can safely uh, take caution and say, it's not only these five municipalities that have been negatively impacted upon. Uh, maybe the ratings agency decided to report only on those files. But I think the entirety um, of, of local governments in South Africa are being negatively impacted upon. That's number one. But I think the entire system of public governments is, is, is being impacted upon uh, by, by, um, by the negative sentiments. Now, can the municipalities that are currently struggling um, under this administration actually wait uh, for the local government elections to be held at a much later date how are they able going to how are they going to be able to survive and function uh, during this particular period um, if, I, if, I, if I read the summary uh, well, my understanding is that uh, former uh, deputy chief justice has proposed that the postponement um, it gets affected uh, over a period of four months. In other words, he has suggested that it's February. Now, I'm not sure if there is going to be any uh, positive change that will take place between October, which was the original date for which the elections were set, and February of next year. I think it's much of a muchness, if I may use uh, those words. The fact of the matter is that the problems that are besetting South African municipalities require all of us. I think there is nothing that is more important than an all-of-society effect. Because if you think about it, I mean, it, news reports that Etequini uh, municipality, or alternatively the KwaZulu-Natal region that was impacted upon by the recent uh, riots, has lost no less than 150,000 jobs. If you assume that there are 
those 150 jobs that have been lost are a representative of 150 households. That implies that 150 households are not going to be able to service uh, their, their, their debts with their municipality. They are not going to be able to pay for their rates. They will ill afford to pay for water, electricity, and the likes. That is also extended to the business fraternity who are unable to trade. And as a consequence of being unable to trade, they themselves are not going to be able to afford the services of the municipality. So there's an economic meltdown that is taking place. And it cannot be that one sector is, 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 is going to be able to solve the problems. This is going to require uh, the efforts of civil society. It's going to require the efforts of, of the private sector. It's going to require a lot of innovation on our part, both legislatively and in terms of, of policy. It's also going to require steadfast leadership on the part of, 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 of government, the public sector, that is, including leadership at a local government level. Uh, there's something um, that tells me that as long as at the base level, in other words, at a municipal level, there is no coalition for change, uh, for changing the climate in which we are in between business, private, and uh, society, broadly speaking, including um, requesting for assistance uh, beyond our borders, because there's a lot of people that are looking at what's happening in South Africa, because there's lots of lessons that South Africa uh, tends um, uh, to, to, to share with the outside world about how it is that we have engaged with Project Democracy since 2002. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's long and short, an all-of-society approach for me is about the most basic uh, uh, ingredient that we need at this point in time. You talk about um, an all-inclusive process. You talk about uh, South Africa's Project Democracy. L let's look at those two aspects and how they make the local government um, elections to be e effective. How is it that the local government e e um, elections, when they are being held, can actually end up having a, a constructive uh, impact on the country as well as this project uh, democracy that you speak about and an impact for the citizens of, of the country as well? Well, Tani, we are um, a generation now at this point in time, uh, 25 years uh, of, of a democracy. So we are the first generation of democratic South Africa. There's a plethora of lessons that I think we have learned in, 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 in trying to make sure that um, a, a democracy is embedded, uh, both systemically and structurally. My sense is that with those lessons learned, I can't um, far from a situation where, with the lessons that we have learned, we cannot start to revisit the, 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 the foundations through which our systems and structures um, were put in place by the founding fathers of our democracy. I think this is opportune. I mean, at the time when we're putting in place a local government system, a particular set of conditions existed. In other words, euphoria, stability, looking forward. 25 years down the line, there's a lot of negativism, right? Uh, there's a lot of uh, pessimistic opinion about the future. And I think there's an opportunity for us um, to rearrest the fact that we are suddenly very much united by the adversity uh, that we're facing from an economic and a social and, and as well as a political point of view so that we can reimagine the future. And I think there is an opportunity that these elections present. So postponing the elections by four months for me should not be uh, too much of a problem, provided we utilize that opportunity to really rethink how we want to strengthen the gains that we have made out of the last 25 years of our democratic life. You talk about reimagining um, the future. On whose doorstep does that responsibility lie? Frankly, on all of us. Uh, of course, led by government. Um, I think political organizations have to have a responsibility to rethink the system. Um, in the South African Cities Network, um, for the last uh, period of our, of our existence, particularly in the last 10 years, one thing that we have been um, emphasizing, um, which um, from time to time many institutions tend to say municipalities are failing. And we've been saying it's not just the municipality that is failing the entire system of governance is beginning to crumble, 
right? And the, uh, this is an opportunity to make uh, uh, changes to how um, it, wa it, it was imagined. And that's not wholesale changes. Clearly, there are certain things that are working, but clearly there are certain things that are not working. So who must lead? I think government has to take the lead. I think government has to set the table for renegotiations, for a rethinking, for reimagining. At it, we as civil society organizations, as um, research and innovation uh, entities, as the private sector, all of us as stakeholders um, uh, in the future of the country, the, the future of the economy, the future of society, and really our need to contribute to overall global citizen growth, all of those things call on all of us to start reimagining. So whereas government must lead, in my opinion, I really think that government on its own cannot lead. And I think that has been proven. I think uh, 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 an all-of-society approach, a situation where all of us act honestly um, and with integrity on how it is that we are imagining our future is, is quite important. Mm, well, thank you very much uh, for your insight uh, this afternoon as we focus on the state of municipalities and how... Um, a, a possible postponement of the local government uh, elections could uh, potentially affect us.